elephant! We may lose this elephant. He's picking down the tree. Wow! My name's Jack Randall, and I'm a zoologist. Wow! Woo! And I'm showing you every animal on the planet. They're not seeing me as a threat. Spinning cobra! Hello. Absolutely gorgeous. Going about their business. Yes. Come on, let's go. Look right here. Huge footprints. This is the largest terrestrial animal on the planet, the elephant. But not just any elephant. This is the desert elephant. It's the only population of desert elephants in the entire world. So we're on the track of them. We're not going to leave these footprints until we find them. For a couple of weeks of the year, flash floods pour down this riverbed, enough to sustain life in a particularly barren and hostile environment. It almost feels like Mars out here. Right, the tracks are going this way. Ha! Here we go. Elephant dung. Come on, have a look at this. That, that's elephant poo. Woo! Smells a little bit fresh too. You see, it's dried up here, but it's a little bit moist there. So that means actually it's not that old. The thing is with these elephants, they're constantly on the move because they need to go from one water hole to the next and they tend to do all that at night. As the day begins to heat up, they're gonna stop moving. So that's our time to be able to track them down. At this point, I reckon there may be another 40 kilometers down river. But that's the kind of distances they're moving every single day to get to the next water resource and also to get to the new bits of vegetation. And you just look around here, look at this. This particular tree, it's quite famous in Africa. It's called the Mapani tree. And elephants love it. There's a lot of nutrients, and that's why they're coming up and down this riverbed. So you've got 250 kilograms of these leaves that they're eating per day, and then they're also drinking 150 litres of water per day each. I mean, that's just astronomical. If you're able to get and find that water, it's remarkable. That's amazing. That is just beautiful. Oh, incredible. We're in a complete desert. There's such little rain. But obviously, there's areas where this water does lie and sit. And these are the areas that the elephants need to be able to survive out here. Woo! I'm not sure what time we're going to be able to track down these elephants, but we're on them. And so we're not going to leave until we find them. Could be this afternoon, could be tonight, could be tomorrow morning, but we'll see these elephants. This is just amazing. As you can see now, it's totally widened up from the point where we first saw the elephant tracks. And I reckon the elephants have headed this way. We're getting closer, I think. fresh it is. Not good news. Big elephant dung, but that is not fresh. Nowhere near fresh, in fact. It's just brittle. So, we've been going potentially the wrong way, or we've completely lost track of the elephants we were first, first on. So what I'm going to do is go and check the map, see where we've come from and what the next plan is to see if we can find these elephants. Woo! Look at that! We've got a lizard. This is a grounder gamid. You can see, she's gorgeous. Look, big fat belly. That is a gravid female, so there's some eggs in there. We'll be soon digging a little hole and then putting those eggs in there and hoping that they'll be able to hatch without a predator coming along. And there'll be maybe six to ten little babies that will come out of those eggs. But we've got to keep going. We're going to try and find these elephants. Tracking these down is actually much harder than expected. 
let's put her back underneath her rock. We've now tracked along this riverbed for maybe 150 kilometers and still not caught up with the elephants. So the plan now is to head out to the community areas to get some local intel. Wow, look at that. There you go. They're the first giraffe we've seen on this filming trip. It is quite magnificent when you see them out in the wild. quite calm in my presence, but as you get out of a vehicle, often they get a lot more nervous. I'm gonna give it a go, see if we can get close to these giraffes. Let's see. Wow. Oh, that's gorgeous. Look at that. It's going in age group, so we've got a, a family here, and they're actually going in height order. So we've got have a tallest end, about five and a half meters. And then we've got the little baby, the little calves, right at the back. At that age, they're actually vulnerable to predators. So you might have lions that would actually be feeding on giraffe of that size. But the big ones, it's unlikely many predators will actually try and take them on. And so it's quite good that they're being led by this group, including that dominant male at the front. But you can kind of see how they are also, like the other animals out here, they're adapted for living in these really dry areas, this desert environment. There's just such a diversity of mammals here in Southern Africa. And it's the giraffe that is the tallest animal on the planet. And the elephant that lives out here and roams in exactly the same habitat is easily the largest, the biggest bodied animal on the planet. It's exceptional. All right, mate, see, see you fellas. Have a good one. Woo! Giraffes. locals I asked, the more I found out that the elephants have come by recently, but the chances are they have turned all the way back in the opposite direction. trying to get into a position where I can get, we can get closer, which is tough because this rocky terrain is really, really hard on the truck. We're going to proper off track now. There he is. Woo! Okay, hang on. It's really hard terrain. We may lose this elephant, which is such a shame. But we are, oh, wow, okay. So he's just kicking down some trees. We have to be careful. Look, he's throwing stuff. We really have to be careful at this point. We've got a male who's being a bit cheeky. We don't want to get any closer, guys.
I've got amazingly good hearing, those big ears. But also, what is definitely underestimated is how good their smell is. So elephants have more smell receptors than any other mammal on this planet. More than a dog's. I'm now at a distance I don't want to get any closer, simply because this is a lone male, and he's probably a bit grumpy. It's not what you would call a big bull dominant male, because they get much larger than that. They can get up to five tons. That's probably two and a half ton male. But at that size, they're trying to show. It's kind of a bit boisterous, trying to show. Look at me. I'm actually strong and powerful. The way he was thrashing away those, that tree, that was more to show how actually powerful he can be. And I can tell you now that our truck, which is about two tons, would not be able to withstand the power of that elephant. He's still making that noise, that trumpeting noise. He's making sure that we know that he's there and he's more powerful than we are and he's in charge. We might not have found that herd, the herd that we were hoping to see, 20, 30, led by a female. But this is quite beautiful. As the sun's coming down now, we've seen the lonely male and this is their life. This is their life alone. But at no time is a male that's at, at an adult size is he welcome for a long periods with the herd. And so this is the life of them. They have to find their own way. And so it's quite remarkable that this one is managing to do all of what the desert elephants have to do, but alone. As he grows and gets bigger and stronger, he may be able to take on a matriarchal herd and be able to mate with that female. I'm gonna leave this elephant to go towards the valley over there. I'm sure he's gonna try and find the next waterhole over the night. Well, I'm not gonna stop until we find that big herd that we're after, the matriarchal herd. So let's keep going. We're on the track. At least there's some optimism that we've managed to find our first elephant on this desert elephant expedition. Yes.